Clean water is what we need to live. I often tell people, you could probably live without a light bulb, but you really can only go a couple of days without water. We're very blessed with uh, incredible aquatic resources, fresh water, some, some unparalleled uh, across the country. We're very fortunate in the state that we have a lot of water here. We have an obligation as, as stewards of our planet to uh, conserve our natural resources for future generations. That's a must. Clean water is a, is a major economic engine, uh, not only here in East Tennessee, but throughout the state and the country. The spring heads, uh, one you see behind me here at Fountain City Lake, was an attraction for people to get away from downtown. There was a, a school built, there were homes built in the area, and a rail line system came out of downtown up to this as a really a vacation destination based in great part because of the clean water, the fountain heads, the spring heads that we, we have in Fountain City. Stormwater is the key right now. Stormwater runs off of all these built areas into the storm system, which is a, like a sluice right to our creeks. Our source water is the Tennessee River, and we draw about 35 million gallons of water from the river each day. Uh, that's treated at our Mark B. Whitaker water plant. An important part of what we do is ensuring public health. We have 77,000 customers, but we actually serve a population in the Knoxville area of a little over 200,000. No one should ever assume that stream water is safe to drink. It requires adequate treatment and testing to make sure that it meets all of the standards uh, that are applicable to drinking water. In fact, there are a lot of things in water, even though it may look clean, that we can't see with our naked eye. People don't realize that pollution happens every day. I think we think of pollution as that big event, BP, Kingston, but they don't realize that companies are given permission to pollute by the state. They have a permit that says you can discharge this much, but no more. And so every day there is pollution going on and people think, well, you know, the water is clean until a big event happens. Well, in some cases we're finding our water is really not clean. That's really one of the reasons that we test water as, as extensively as we do. We treat the water at our, our, our Mark B. Whitaker plant uh, through filtration. Uh, it's a conventional filtration plant. It goes through a, a series of steps. When it comes in, uh, it's screened and it's uh, a disinfectant called chlorine dioxide is applied to it to kill uh, bacteria, uh, germs, viruses, other th types of um, substances that could cause disease. Uh, from that point, the water leaves and it goes to a step where we remove more solids. It's called coagulation and sedimentation. We add a coagulant that allows the smaller particles to bind together and they settle out in tanks. Again, the whole purpose in that is to remove solids from the water. And then the water from that point also goes through a filtration step where it removes the rest of the contaminants by trapping it with the media that's in large filters that we use at our plant and then disinfect it again before uh, we send it out to our customers in our distribution system. And that's important also because we have about 1,500 miles of pipes in our system and U.S. regulations actually require that we maintain a level of disinfectant to protect public health. It must meet all of the uh, EPA, federal and state drinking water standards. All of our water meets those standards on a daily basis. The limits are set in parts per billion or parts per trillion. Uh, when you're looking at that level of contaminant, you have to have some fairly sophisticated equipment to see that low. In fact, a part per billion is like looking for a grain of sand in Olympic-sized swimming pools. When the Clean Water Act was passed, rivers were catching on fire. The Cuyahoga River had caught on fire many times, but the last straw was when it burnt down a railroad bridge. So it was on the front page of newspapers, when your water catches fire, it's a big deal. When the act was, was reauthorized and passed in the 70s, agriculture was exempt. And now we're finding that agriculture is not just a mom and pop affair, it is a huge industry. 
and the pollution caused by some of these confined animal feeding operations is as much as a city. The waste is the equivalent of a city. And it's not very well regulated, and there are, have been many accidents of waste being discharged into rivers. Our department ensures a water quality that's served to our customers, our drinking water quality. We perform um, a total of more than 100,000 different tests here at KUB's Water Quality Laboratory in order to ensure uh, the, the safety and, and the health of our drinking water and also the water quality in our streams and, and area waterways. There's fairly stringent requirements drink your tap water. It's good water here. Drinking water is very safe um, and as long as it meets the treatment and the drinking water standards, it's, it's a great choice. Tap water is a great choice. And we can treat our water and we have award-winning tap water around here. It often exceeds standards that bottled water does um, and it's uh, definitely a bargain. It's less than a, a cent a gallon. So uh, it's a great healthy choice and um, a, a good economic choice. A supply that comes directly to your house, you just turn on the tap and there it is. There are a lot of simple things that people can do uh, to, to keep water clean. Part of that is to keep pollutants on site, reduce fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, those kinds of things. Something as simple as washing your car in the yard and not uh, in the driveway where detergents and things uh, drain off into the storm drains. It deserves to be taken care of and I've met more and more people who recognize that this is a beautiful place and it deserves protection.